Hello everyone! Today I'm talking all about Taylor Jenkins Reid. So today we're going to talk about every single one of her books, order of publication, tell you what they are all about, tell you which ones were my favorite, which ones were my least favorite, and where I think you should start out. So this is an author specific video and my goal for these videos is for you to learn more about their books, to figure out if you want to read them or not, maybe if they are an author for you, or maybe if they're an author that is not for you. So Jenkins Reid is a very popular adult, I would say contemporary slash literary fiction author. She really came to be very popular last year when The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo really exploded. Everyone read it and that really put her on the map and it made a lot of people, including myself, go back and read every single one of her books. So that is how I came to learn about Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm honestly beating myself up because I haven't discovered her sooner <laughs> because she is definitely an author for me. She is one of my new favorite authors of all time. I would probably put her in my top five favorite authors of all time. That's how much I love her books. So in case you're trying to get into Taylor Jenkins Reid's books to figure out where you want to start out with, which book sounds appealing to you, which books should you skip, this video should hopefully help in that regard. So first things first, I'm going to talk about every single one of her books starting out with the first book she ever published working up to her latest release. So the first book came out in 2013 and that is Forever Interrupted and this is about a main character named Elsie and Elsie meets Ben and they have a whirlwind of a romance. They move in together within a span of months and then they are married within six months and then during the first week of their newly wedded bliss Ben gets hit by a car and he dies tragically. Elsie obviously does not know what to do with herself. She is trying to gather herself and and then she meets Ben's mother for the very first time who not only did she not know that her son had got married, she didn't even know that he was dating anyone. So Elsie now has to navigate with being a widow and learning about her mother-in-law that she really didn't know anything about and trying to navigate that relationship. This book is very sad. It's full of grief. It's full of learning how to start again and learning how to cope with a death. It this is her very first ever published book and I could definitely tell it was but it was beautifully written. It was sad. Like I said, it's going to make you sob throughout the entirety of this book. Like when I say I cried throughout this book, it's not a lie at all. I cry. Like I cried messy tears throughout reading this whole book. So this book is just talks about grief, talks about your spouse dying and what to do with that and also how to navigate a family relationship that you don't really know how to navigate. Next up, published in 2014, is After I Do. This follows Lauren and Lauren is married to Ryan and they have been together since college. They've been married for 10 years and then they discover that they're not really in love after all. So they decide to take a year's break. They split up and he moves out of the house and Lauren has to figure out if she wants to be married or not, if she wants, if she's, if she is in love with Ryan or if she isn't. So this book is all about the exploration of Lauren and who she is because she's kind of lost herself after she got married to Ryan. She, she wasn't exactly Lauren anymore. So this book obviously talks about a marriage that's kind of falling apart and what to do after that. It talks about a year of trial separation of what to do and it also talks about Lauren of discovering who she is on her own because she's never really been on her own without Ryan. There's always been Lauren and Ryan. There's never been just Lauren. So this book, like I said, it's kind of another sad book. You'll sense a theme with Taylor Jacobs Reid's book a lot of her books have a little bit of a sad tendency to them. Some of them are very, very sad and some of them kind of have a hopeful, you know, outlook on it. So this one, like I said, it's all about marriage and kind of discovering who you are after marriage and discovering if you want to be married or if you really don't want to be married, if you're really in love with somebody or if you're in love with the idea of somebody really and discovering who you are on your own. And then in 2015, we have Maybe in Another Life was published. This one follows her main character named Hannah. Hannah is 29 and she's still grappling with what she wants to do with her life. She doesn't know where she wants to be, who she wants to be. She moves around constantly. And then after a really bad breakup in New York, she decides to move back home to California. So she moves in with with her best friend named Gabby and then on the night she moves back home they go out for like a celebratory welcome home Hannah and they go to a bar and Hannah runs into her ex named Ethan and she's still kind of in love with Ethan and they were high school sweethearts they ended amicably and they ended because of distance and basically the night kind of unfolds from there and at the end of the night Ethan's like hey do you want to come home with me and that's where this book really takes place we follow two trajectories two parallel lives really so the alternating chapters are 
this one decision. So when Ethan asks Hannah, does she want to come home with him? In alternating chapters, we follow if she does go home with him, what happens with her life if she does decide to go home with him? And on the other chapters, we learn about her life if she doesn't go home with him. So it's alternating timelines of what her life would be based on this one particular decision. This book has a lot of things in it. You know, it talks about different parallel lives and things like that. It talks about love, talks about finding yourself again. And I think the main appeal with this book is that the alternating chapter, that the chapters are alternating with different lives of based on one decision. One True Loves was published in 2016. And in this book, we follow Emma. Emma fell in love with Jesse in high school and it was a whirlwind romance. They got married, they moved away because they were were from a very small town in Massachusetts. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And they both wanted to be bigger and better things. She becomes this writer that she wanted to and he becomes a like nature producer, things like that. On their one year wedding anniversary, Jesse gets an opportunity to go to these islands as the production assistant on a nature documentary. And then his helicopter goes missing over the Pacific. Nobody, nobody has found him or any of his crew, so he is presumed dead. So obviously Emma is very distraught and she doesn't know what to do. So she decides to move back home to Massachusetts. And she decides to start working at her family's bookstore. And there she starts to learn how to heal and learn how to be herself and learn how to recover after being a widow. Widow. Then she meets Sam, or shall I say she re-meets Sam, a guy that she knew in high school that worked at her parents' bookstore. And then she learns to love again. Her and Sam have a relationship. They fall in love. Sam asked her to marry him and she says yes. And then literally right after they get engaged, she gets a call that Jesse is alive, that he has been alive this entire time and he is coming home. So this book is literally the title, One True Loves. Can you have more than one true loves? Can you be in love with two Two people at the same time. It's all about Emma trying to figure out who she really wants. Does she really want to be with Jesse, her first husband, the person that she fell in love with? Or does she want to be with Sam, her new love? Because she has changed drastically ever since Jesse was presumed dead. So that is what this one is all about. A lot about grief, a lot about regrowing, about refinding love again, and things like that. In 2017, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was released and it blew up like wildfire, I'm sure. If you've heard about Taylor Jenkins Reid, you think of the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this follows a main character named Monique, and she is a magazine reporter. And she's not very like high up in where she works at her magazine, but then she gets a call that the Evelyn Hugo, the Evelyn Hugo wants Monique to interview her. And Evelyn Hugo, think of her almost like Elizabeth Taylor, if you will. She is very well renowned. She is known. Everybody who's anybody knows who Evelyn Hugo is. When I picture Evelyn Hugo, I picture Elizabeth Taylor with a little bit of Marilyn Monroe. Like she's very revered. People love her. She is known. Um, so Monique goes over to Evelyn Hugo's house and Evelyn Hugo says, I want you to print my life story. And that is where the story really begins. So when Monique is interviewing her, Evelyn Hugo will take over the storyline and you will go back in the past to learn how Evelyn Hugo Hugo got to be famous and also in particular her seven husbands that she had because everyone knew that Evelyn Hugo had seven husbands. Why did she have those seven husbands? Why that many? Was she really in love with them? Was it all just the sham? And it really dissects her life and how she came to be famous and how she came to have so many husbands. Just basically her life story, what you learn about. You learn about really old school Hollywood, how a woman got to be famous, how a woman, um, didn't have a lot of power, and you just learn about Evelyn Hugo as a whole. In 2018, Taylor Jenkins Reid did not publish a full-length novel, but rather a novella, The Evidence of the Affair. It is around 100 pages, so this one I'm gonna tell you very little about because it is that short. It's a short story. Basically, what The Evidence of the Affair is all about, a wife finds out that her husband is cheating on her. It takes place in the 60s, I wanna say, and she learns that her husband is cheating on her because she finds letters from his mistress. So she decides to mail the mistress's husband because the mistress is the because the mistress is married so she says hey just letting you know that your wife and my husband are having an affair just to let you know and then they start a correspondence this book is told in all letter formats it's a hundred pages and basically it's about 
the dissection of an affair, pretty much. Her latest novel that just got released this past week in 2019 is Daisy Jones and the Six. This book takes place in the 70s. It follows the band called The Six of how they came to be famous, of what they did to be famous, and we also follow Daisy Jones and how she joined The Six and how they really, really rose to fame. Like, they were a very influential and very popular band in the 70s, and then they released one album, it got crazy, went up like wildfire, and then they just broke up out of the blue. Nobody knows why until now. This book is told in all interview format. There is not one page of like straight up dialogue of just a traditional book format, I would say. It's told literally in interview format. You get to hear from every member of the six. You get to hear from Daisy Jones. You get to hear from um, Rolling Stones, from photographers, of people that really knew the six. Uh, basically, this whole book is about the six's journey of how they became a band, how Daisy Jones was a part of it, and just really talks about the 70s as a whole, the music industry in particular. You also get to learn about how, you know, music was made. It also talks a lot about drugs, a lot about sex, a lot about hard-hitting topics as well. But like I said, what's different about this book from her other books that it is told in all interview format, as you can see right here, 70s, a rock band coming into fruition, and then they just break up all of a sudden. And very Fleetwood Mac F. So those are every single one of her books that she has published in order of publication date. Um, just so you know more information about them. So in case you were interested in one and I told you more information about it, maybe you want to read it, maybe not. So just what all of her books are about. Now we're going to dive into my least favorite books working up to my favorite books by her. I just want to preface by saying all of her full-length novels, all of them, I have given a five out of five. I <laughs> doesn't happen a lot with me with authors. In fact, I would say that never happens with me, but something about Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, I am just immediately drawn into. Like, her books are one of the rare few that when I'm done with them, I am genuinely sad. Like, just sad that they are over, and I want to reread them immediately. So me, her books are just right up my alley. I love the way she writes. I love how she makes these characters, of uh, how she and she writes a lot of unlikable characters too. Not all of her books I love the characters because they're just unlikable but they are dynamic and they are very intriguing to read about which makes me come back to her books because I'm so invested in the storyline. Her books full length novels wise I've given a five out of five. For me to really order this list was very hard because I love all of her books so much so yeah these are my least favorite working up to my favorite favorite of her books. So my least favorite Taylor doing is Renata which by the way like I said I've given them all five out of five so I love them all really. My least favorite has to be Forever Interrupted. This was her very first published book and like I said it shows but I think the reason for me of why it's my least favorite is because it was so sad like all of her books, like I said, have a tinge of sadness in them, but this one was just straight up sad from beginning to end. It was a sob fest. Like, I cried throughout the whole time reading it, and that's just me personally because <laughs> I just don't do well with, like, spouses dying in books. Like, I don't do well with that at all. Like, all of her books, let's just say, I will reread any day. This one, I never want to reread again because it was so insanely sad. So this one is my least favorite because of the subject matter and of how sad it was. Like I don't ever want to revisit it again because it was sad and depressing. Next up is The Evidence of the Affair. I really enjoyed this one and I really would love to see it a full length novel. Um, the reason why it's so low on the list because it was so short. It was only 100 pages so I feel like I can't really gauge of whether I loved it or not. I will say there were some short stories that I've read by certain authors that I've loved. This one wasn't one of them. I have this one I did give four out of five just because the ending was very open-ended. I was very floored by the ending as well but I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I did like that it was told in all letter format but the ending was what really jarred me. I didn't hate the ending by any means. I just wanted more of it. Like I would love to see this one made into a full-length novel, I think, personally, but I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. Next up is One True Loves. I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, I've given them all five out of five, but this one, I would have to say, I didn't love the main character, Emma. After reading it initially, I really did love her and I understood her completely, but after thinking about it and mulling on it for quite some time, I don't love Emma and the decisions that she made. This one is very, you know, love triangly because she has a husband that she thought had passed away and then she falls in love with a new guy. And the whole time you're thinking, who will she pick? Which man? And it's kind of like a competition, but it's very, it's handled very well. But Emma, I don't think makes the best decisions and she's very, 
very kind of, she's not the best. <laughs> Let me just say that. Like there are some things she says and does to a certain character and I just can't get on board with that. So I did really enjoy this one. I gave it a five out of five. And I love the bookstore aspect of it. And I love the Massachusetts feel of it. And I loved, you know, person trying to figure it out again. I did love this one, but the main character is the main qualm I have with this book. Going into my top four, all of these I love, like I said. I have Daisy Jones and the Six. This one, I will say, is one Taylor Jenkins Reid book that people will either love or hate. Any of her other books, I would recommend to anybody on a given day. This one, I would be a little bit hesitant to because of its format. Just like I said, it's told in all interview format. Format. Some people will really love it. Some people will not love it. So that's the one I'm kind of like, uh, people might not like it. I really loved it. I will say the first 25% was the hardest for me to get into it. I thought, crap, I am not going to love this book. This is going to be jarring to me. I'm not going to understand the format. I'm not going to like the format. But after the first 25%, I fell in deep with this format. And by the end of it, I was obsessed. Like this is one of the books that after I finished it, I Googled the six. I wanted to see all their live performances. I wanted to look at their album covers. I wanted to figure out more about Daisy Jones because I thought they were a hundred percent real people and they were fictional like I was I was determined that they were real and that's what really captivated me and why I loved it so much at the end because Taylor Jenkins Reid like crafted this band that I just fell in love with and I just so this book like I said is not going to be for everyone because it is told in an interview format I fell in love with it I found it very engaging very real definitely one of my favorite books by her I gave it a five out of five I was obsessed with it. I already want to reread it. This one made me want to listen to all of the Fleetwood Mac. There's a playlist dedicated to this book. It's got a lot of Fleetwood Mac on there, so I think it's very heavily inspired by the history of the band Fleetwood Mac. But I loved it, but I don't know if I would recommend it to you for a first time ever Taylor Jenkins read book because of its format and that's so different from her book. I would say if you've read a lot of her books and are interested in it, I would recommend this, but if, it, if you want to read Taylor Jenkins Reid and you want this to be her, and you want this one to be the first book of hers that you read, I would not recommend it for that regard. Read a few of her other books and then read this one. And my top three, number three, we have After I Do. This is the only book of Taylor Jenkins Reid that I've listened to fully on audiobook, and I think that's why I love it so much more than other ones because I really got a sense of the characters because I listened to it via audio. But this one, I, I just I fell in love with the book. I fell in love with this one. It made me laugh a lot. It made me cry a lot. I just loved reading about the character of Lauren and her discovering who she was outside of her marriage and if she really loved Ryan. And at the end, I was like on the edge of my seat trying to figure out if they would get back together or if they wouldn't. What was I rooting for personally? Did I want to see Lauren by herself and make it on her own or did I want to see her with her husband Ryan? I love this book. I would highly recommend it. I think also if you are married, you would appreciate this book a lot more because I've been married for 10 years. I understand the ups of marriage and I understand the lows of marriage. Every marriage will go through that rocky roller coaster that is marriage. So with a lot of her things that she felt, I felt too. With a lot of things that she wanted to change or why she fell in love with, I felt too. So I really appreciated it. So I really love this one. My second favorite is Maybe in Another Life. I love this one. I would say this one and Daisy Jones are her two books that are very different from all of her other books because Daisy Jones follows an interview format and, and this one follows like two different lives of like decisions, things like that. I love this one so much. You will find yourself rooting for one a life over the other one. So for other books, you're like rooting for a certain love interest. This one, you're gonna be like, I want her to have this life or I want her to have this life. It also shows that you know, one decision can affect your whole life. One decision can like take you on a different life path than another one, take you on a different trajectory completely. So I love this one. I thought it was super unique. I love the format that it was told in and I love the characters. Loved how it ended, how it tied all together beautifully, honestly. Like, oh, such an amazing ending. Would highly recommend it. And my favorite book of Taylor Diggs Reed is I think a lot of people's favorite, and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is the first Taylor Jenkins Reid book I've ever read, and it's still my favorite book. This one was just so beautifully told. This one also is kind of a different format because you're getting a um, present day, and then you're also going back into Evelyn Hugo's life. And this one is just so gripping. Like I said with Daisy Jones, but after I finished that book, I Googled Daisy Jones and the Six because I thought they were real. Same goes with Evelyn Hugo. Like I was determined to go to Evelyn Hugo 
Lewis filmography and just watch all of her movies, watch all of her public appearances. I was just enamored with Evelyn Hugo, but Evelyn Hugo is a very unlikable character. A lot of Taylor Jenkins Reid's characters are very unlikable. Evelyn Hugo's unlikable. Daisy Jones is unlikable. The girl from What You Love is unlikable. But they are just so intriguing to read about. You can't help but just falling in love with them because they're so interesting and their storyline is so interesting. This one talks about so many important things as well, like diversity, especially in Hollywood, especially back in the day as well. It talks a lot about LGBTQ representation and how hard it was back then, especially for that. It talks about just so many amazing things. And overall, it was a very beautifully told story and I was obsessed with it. So yeah, it's my favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid novel. Hands down, I would reread it again gladly 50 times over. Like, I love it. So the question is, is where should you start with Taylor Jenkins Reid? Which books are a great place for you to get a feel of her writing style? That honestly, I would say her, my two favorite books. I would say maybe start with Maybe Another Life because I feel like that's a lot of because you're really going to get a sense of feeling of how she writes, of the characters that she writes, and maybe go into Seven Husbands because I think a lot of people start off with Seven Husbands and they think that all of her writing is going to be as epic and amazing as her other books and I don't agree with that. I would say she writes a lot of different genres. Evelyn Hugo is more serious and I would classify it as more historical literary fiction and Maybe In Our Life is definitely very chick litty woman's fiction. So two different genres and she does a lot of ones. Daisy Jones is kind of historical and more literary fiction I would say but the other majority of her books I would classify as chick lit. So I would say maybe start with one of her kind of woman's fiction chick litty ones maybe this one or after I do and kind of get a feel of her writing style and then go into Seven Husbands. So that way you're not I think at the peak of it you're kind of going up to the peak of it I would not recommend you start with Daisy Jones because it's told so such in a different format but either way I mean any Taylor Drake is read book you read is not gonna be wrong at all because I love all of her books. So there you have it. There was me dissecting every single one of her books. They were about whether I liked them or not and things like that. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you want to read her books or if you don't, I would love to hear what you think about this video and if you like the format of it. And what is your favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid book? And if you have not read her books, have I inspired you to do so? Which one are you going to start out with? I would love to hear your feedback and yeah, leave me in the comments. Let's talk all about her books because I could do that for forever. Ever. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.